good. We're gonna play with lots you did, and lots you did good. of you glass. Did good. Torch time. It's the first goblet in months. And I'm pretty satisfied with it. Now for the ladies that love custom glass pendants. There's one, it's all gold fuming and cobalt. Here's all silver fuming and onyx. And a Christmas ornament. Now unfortunately, what I really need is black behind this because this is switchbacks and reversals, which has been a common question here on YouTube about glass. And uh, of course, Jutter Bunny asked the question on the last Q and Acro Duster about color tubes. So I'm going to do it. We're going to cover from the very beginning through the end. Go ahead and brace yourselves though. This could be way more than one Acro Duster torch time. Okay. So I've got what is important when starting a color tube or a color prep. For those of you that have never heard of this, this is a color prep or color tube. This is literally what we're going to be making today. And we'll be lucky if we make it through the whole procedure, but I'll try. This is how you do switchbacks and reversals. Um, Obviously, the smaller the tube you practice this on, the less color and less time it'll take for each practice. And don't fool yourself, it will take practice to do it well. First thing I'm going to do is really just kind of uniformly heat this point. Now, I'm working on 34, 34, 35 millimeter super heavy wall. There's a lot of different tubes you can use for this technique. Um, practicing it, I think 25 millimeter super heavy wall is probably the best. Size to, to try this a couple hundred times or however many times it takes. In case you were wondering, I ran over there and flashed in the fire for a bit. You notice my glass is completely clear and this end had some fogging to it before. Those were finger oils, dust from the atmosphere, stuff that had accumulated on and inside the tube of glass that would have affected the optical characteristics, so I go ahead and burn it off. As always, when doing a color tube, you have to choose your colors. Uh, I've got myself set up here for what I think is going to be a beautiful tube. And I'm going to go ahead and commence. Now, the first trick is drawing lines. Now, one thing I've found that helps is drawing lines from here to here and avoiding this section and this section of cone where all of the direction is going to change. Um, it lets me get a more uniform color tube. Now, there's people that worry about every last cent of glass if you're one of those. You're going to have to push a little harder. At this stage, it's important to understand that, my, <clears throat> that ultimately my only real goal here and at this point in the work is to get nice, even lines run axially along the outside of the tube. And once I have those, I'll grab my second color. Once I've got color wrapped all the way around, I'm going to go ahead and case it all with clear. Don't forget to rewarm your piece before you get carried away. Okay, so I've got color wrapped all the way around it, lines, vertical or axial, and then I've cased it all in clear. Now comes the ugliest of ugly parts. I have to get this so molten that it's just one continuous lump of glass. All the color, all the clear, everything. And that means a lot of heat, even on like little 35 millimeter, and that means you should take adequate precautions to protect you from the heat. I'm going to go ahead and use Kevlar sleeves, because in a minute it's going to get ugly. Now one thing that I think people starting out in this technique fight with a lot is not understanding how molten you need to get it. 
you cannot just like kind of half have this together. You have to turn all of this into one lump of glass while you're preparing to draw it out. And I found that people get afraid when glass gets really, really hot. It starts to flow fast, it behaves what some people consider erratically, and it does it rapidly, so you don't have a lot of time to adjust. Now I'm going to start by making the end one homogenous piece of glass before I punty up to it. That way I don't have any stress risers that could be flashed with heat and cause me a problem in a little bit. And I'll alternate directions of rotation on a regular basis because alternating directions will allow me to keep my lines completely straight. Give it a little puff. And now you can see this half is completely smooth and is one piece of glass and this piece is not. This is my biggest danger, this ring right there. If I don't deal with that relatively soon fashion, I could have major problems. Don't even bother with a cold seal punty for this kind of work. You need a hot seal. You need a really strong bit to yank and pull on. Now as the punty end solidifies and becomes harder and harder, I'll transition to supporting the piece entirely off of that end. So there you can see what I was talking about. I've melted in that end. So here comes the real magic for all of you. That trick here is to keep my line straight while I'm drawing down my color prep tube. And you draw very slow at first, and then you start to pull. All depends too on what you're planning on making out of it, the size of ornaments or whatever you're planning on making it will determine a lot of things. And there you go, that is the first step of making a color tube. So later, I'll show you what to do with these. But for this week, that's prep stage one. Go ahead and practice it and get really good, because the next stage, if this isn't right, the rest just won't happen. Until uh, next week, this is Zachary Duster saying, enjoy your torch time.